Paul is going to tell me, he's going to give me some light more than the book of Hebrews. Come with me to Joel. Or Joel is going to say it more clearly. Come with me to Joel chapter 3. Daniel, Hosea, and you keep telling, you're going to find Joel. After Hosea's Joel. Joel chapter 3. Joel 3. I want us to see Joel chapter 3 verse 15. Verse 16. Are we there? Joel 3 verse 15 and verse 16. It says the sun, question, is this the same things in the book of Luke? The sun and the moon shall be darkened. Did Luke mention this? And the stars shall withdraw their shining. Did Luke mention this? Yes. And what comes next? It says the Lord shall roar out of Zion and utter, what's that key word? His voice from where? From Jerusalem. And when he utters his voice, what's going to happen to the earth and the heavens? And the heavens and the earth shall do what? Shall shake. But the Lord will be, be the hope of his people, the strength of the children of Israel. So what, according to Joel, shakes the heavens and the earth? The voice of God. So we see it's the voice of God that's going to shake the heavens and earth. Now this is my question. When has God's voice heard? Now, I, all I know is that God's voice, whenever it is heard, God's little voice is going to shake the heaven and the earth. But my question is, when is God's voice heard? Because when it is heard, whenever it is heard, at where? Very close, but not true. Thank you, mother. Come with me in your Bible to Revelation chapter 16. Revelation 16. At where, where did you say his voice is heard? And the seven plague. Let's see that. Revelations chapter 16. Revelations, the 16th chapter. Revelation chapter 16, verse 17. Revelation 16, verse 17. Are we there? Revelation 16, verse 17. It says, And the seventh angel poured out his veil into the air. So this is the seventh plague, right? As probation closed or it's way closed? Way closed. It's way closed, right? So it says, And the seventh angel poured out his veil into the air. And there came, what is it next? What does it say there? A great voice out of the temple of heaven, from, out of the temple of heaven, from the throne saying, It is done. Is that the voice of God? Verse 18. And there were voices, thunderings, lightnings, and a great earthquake. Was the earth shaken? Mm -hmm. Such was not since men were upon the earth so mighty an earthquake and so great. So my question is this. When is the voice of God heard? Speak to me. When is his voice heard? At the seventh plague. Now question, who are the plagues poured upon? That's not a good enough answer. Who are the plagues poured upon? Those have the mark of the beast. Those have the mark of the beast. So the seventh plague comes on those who have the... Now, let's reason together. If the powers of the heavens been shaken as the voice of God at the seventh plague, what does that imply? What must happen before that seventh plague? Think now. The plagues only fall on those who have the mark of the beast. So can there be any plagues if no one has the mark? So question, what must come just before the powers of the heavens been shaken? So just before the powers of the heavens been shaken, I can put it in between the stress of nations and powers of shaken. What must take place? National Sunday law. So I know I am not yet at the seventh plague for sure. I know we're not yet at the National Sunday law. That means by... I have to be by default, by the distress of nations, what perplexity. According to Luke... Of the distress of nations, whatever it is, I don't know as yet, we're going to study it and see what it is. According to Luke, of the distress of nations with perplexity, what does he say come next? I'm saying in Luke's chart, I'm saying we, we, we reason this chart out. What comes next? National Sunday Law. What does that mean for Seventh-day Adventists? Our probation is about closing. No time to prepare. What if I tell you in 2022... We are standing on the brink of the distress of nations with perplexity. Now, what I want us to do, 
let's look at this phrase, the stress of nations. And let's see how does the Bible use this phrase, the stress of nations. How I'm saying when the Bible uses the stress of nations, what is the context of God using these words, the stress of nations? Come in your Bible to Isaiah 29. Isaiah 29. What are we looking at the word? The stress of nations. And then I want us to look at the word perplexity because it's the stress of nations word perplexity. Isaiah 29. Please help me. When the Bible uses the stress of nation, in what context? The stress of nations, Isaiah 29, verse 7. Are we all there? Isaiah 29, verse 7. It says, And the multitude of all, that key word, the nations. So we're talking about nations, right? And then it says, That fight against Ariel. Ariel. So it's nations fighting here, right? Even all that fight against her, munition. And that key word, the stressor shall be as a dream of a night vision. Does the Bible use the word, does it use the words in Isaiah 29, the stress? And does it use the word nations? What is the context where nations are distressed? What's the context here? War. Are you seeing that? The nations are distressed in context of what? War. So question, and when it says distress of nations, what must we understand this to be? War. But question, it can't be any war. No. It says a war that brings what? Perplexity. Now, what does that word perplexity mean? Yes, the stress of nations. What distress nations is war. But it says it's war with perplexity. Now, what does the word perplexity mean? Perplexity. Actually, sorry, I shouldn't ask you all. The Greek word. Sorry, yes, the Greek word that's translated perplexity. I want you to see what's the word. Yeah. There's the word, yeah? This is the Strong's Concordance. There's the word, yeah? Aperio. Do you know what that word means? Does anybody know what that word means? There's, a, there, there's outline biblical usages. This is what it means. To be without resources. What, 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 what do you say when people don't have resources, food, clothing? What, what will you call that? Petrol. What will you call that? It's a crisis. It's a crisis. Now question, friends. It says here to be without resources. That will be food, clothing, things that you need to survive, resources. Question. What will cause people to be without these things? As if they cannot do what? afford these things. Now, what in the market, if this thing goes up, everything else goes up? Please speak to me, someone. Please speak to me, someone. Does anybody know which nation pumps the most oil in the world? Russia. Does anybody know what America just done for Russia? They pronounce sanctions on their oil. If sanction is pronounced on their oil, that means there's not enough oil for the world. Guess what happened to the petrol that is there? Skyrockets. Guess what happens if petrol goes up? Everything, everything, that, you, everything that you can think of goes up as well. You say, why? Because to transport that stuff, you need petrol. The stress of nations, that's a war that brings about a financial issue for the world. Immediately following that National Sunday Law, I wonder if you are seeing this today. I wonder if you are on the brink of this. I want you to see this. It says here, yeah, Biden, now interesting, Daniel 11 verse 40, says that the king of the north is going to come against the king of the south, he's going to use two things, ships and horsemen. Can you remember we studied it for almost how many weeks? What does ships represent? Economy. Sanctions. Sanctions. It says here, Biden blocks Russian oil imports in latest round of sanctions on Kremlin. Again, Russia-Ukraine war. Oil prices increase. Chance of a what? A recession. Again, Russia's war in Ukraine has driven up gas prices 
will rising oil costs increase, increase food prices next? 